Story time, how I met my husband. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Auntie Rowe and I post videos with advice, reviews, scams, and bargains. And sometimes some fun content like carpool karaoke. But this video is going to be about how I met my husband, who I've been married to for 10 years. So I actually met my husband the way most people are meeting their spouses nowadays, and I met my husband online. So as some of you know, I am a trained paralegal, and I was a courtroom paralegal at the time, and I was sitting in court one day in trial, just bored out of my mind, and I got a notification on my phone. I thought it was the attorneys. I look, and it's somebody sent you a message. We met on the Plenty of Fish platform before Tinder existed. So he messages me and it's not this usual, hey, what up? He actually messaged, you have beautiful eyes. So I was raised, you always say thank you when you receive a compliment. So I responded back and said, thank you. I later told him he was a genius for starting with a compliment because it's opened up the communication. Well, I was in trial for the, we started talking the rest of the day via text message. And then we were on the phone all night while I was working and we proceeded to do this throughout the entire trial. And for the next three months while I was on trial, vacation trial, and then finally we're supposed to have our first date in person three months later. The day of our date, I literally had just gotten home from a trial the night before. So I call him and I ask if we can push the date back an hour. He thinks I'm calling to cancel. So no, 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 I just need to push it back. Because girls you know, and boys you may not know, when girls are getting ready for a date, especially a first date, there is primping and plucking and poofing and beautification that takes at least an hour so that we can look our very, very best for you guys. So the night before he had called and said, you know, dress nice, you know, I'll come and pick you up. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm a smart girl. I will meet you there. Tell me which restaurant. Okay. Cause you're not going to know where I live or any of that until I know who you are. So the restaurant he tells me, and it happens to be a restaurant I frequent very often. So I get there early and I tell the wait staff and the hostess, like, hey, you know, put us so that, you know, his back is facing the door in case I need to make the escape. And they're like, got you. Our waiter was a waiter I've known for many, many years. So, you know, he was like an uncle to me. So he kept an eye out. We had a great time at dinner. We then went to Starbucks for an after dinner coffee and continued talking closed down the Starbucks. So then we wound up sitting in his truck with the music on, continuing to talk and have a great time. And then I looked at the time and it was like five o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I got to be at a horse show for my sister in like two hours. I got to go. And he's like, okay, well, you know, let's go. And then his car wouldn't, his truck wouldn't start and he needed a jump. So he had to call AAA. And I'm like, I am so sorry. I have somewhere to be in literally two hours. I got to go. Please call me and let me know you got home safe. And I literally left him in the parking lot of the restaurant. And I'm like, I am never hearing from this guy again. It's over. And wouldn't you know, he called me when he got home to let me know he got home safe. And I'm like, okay, well, thank you for calling. I had a great time. I hope, you know, we can do it again sometime. I did not plan on ever hearing from him again. I mean, I just flat out ghosted him and left him at that restaurant. Wouldn't you know about six hours later, he texted me to ask how the horse show was going. So then we had a date a couple of days later. We went to dinner and a movie. And then we had another date. We were supposed to have another date in a couple of days. And the day of the date, I'm like, listen, I'm on a deadline for projects. I really can't go out. I got to get this done. I have meetings tomorrow. And he's like, don't worry. I'm going to come and bring you dinner. 
and I will keep myself occupied. And I'm like, I don't want you to be bored. I've got to get this stuff done. And he's like, listen, I know you. If I don't bring you something to eat, you're going to get so involved with work that by the time you stop, it's going to be too late to eat and you're just going to go to bed hungry. So I'm going to bring you dinner. And he did. And to keep himself occupied, he cleaned my kitchen and bathed my dog. But on top of that, my mother and my sister both came down at different times to my condo to talk to me or get something. So they met him because I forgot to lock the door or tell them I had company because I was supposed to be working. So both my sister and my mother met him on our third date. So then that weekend, uh, we were supposed to meet my friends and hang out. So we wound up hanging out for the weekend. Well, Sunday night when he had to go home, I was like, well, hey, you know, if you want to come back tomorrow or whatever, and you decide you want to, you know, it's late and you want to stay the night, like, why don't you leave some stuff here, like uniforms and toiletries? So like, if you're here, you don't have to leave and you can just go to work from here. So it's the next day and it's about 7.30 at night and I have literally not heard from him all day. Now I'm thinking, okay, asking him to leave some stuff here, I overstepped the line and now I'm never going to hear from him again. And uh, with that, my front door swings open and in he comes carrying a big screen TV. And I look at him like, what the fudge is going on. He said, don't worry. I'm going to find a spot for everything. And I mean, I said, what do you mean everything? Next thing you know, all the clothes come, everything comes, the PlayStation, everything. He literally moved in. We had been dating a week and two days and he moved in. Okay. If you love this story, you're going to love our engagement story gone wrong. Well, proposal gone wrong. The engagement story is pretty funny. Uh, I'll be posting that next, so stay tuned. Post in the comments below uh, what you think of this story because it is true story. We literally moved in together a week and two days after our first date. So comment below if you've had the same experience or something similar or if you know somebody who's had the similar experience or if you think we're just crazy. Have a great day. Stay rosy.